This is FYI on your TV, brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I've got James Keelahan with me. You're the artistic director for the Stuart Park Festival. Welcome to FYI. Thank you for having me. We've got this is a huge festival. It's been going on for decades. 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 Yeah, yeah that's for our a very, answer. Very, very long time. <laughs> for yeah. a very long time. And once again, we're going to do it this year, July 14th to the 16th. Yep. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the venues. Let's talk about the uh, the musicians that are showing up. It's huge. Yeah, well, we run three stages. The, uh, the, the main stage, which is in Stewart Park proper, uh, right behind the town hall in Perth. Uh, and we get about 2,000, 2,500 people in the field in front of that stage. And then uh, cross over the, the river and over the, the corner of that, that large field. On the other side is a stage we call the Wendy Lot stage, and that's our workshop or our session stage. So that's a, a stage where we uh, group musicians together in, in like twos or threes in order to sort of interact with one another. And then uh, we use the Crystal Palace uh, over on the, the other side uh, as a daytime and a nighttime stage. So during the daytime we have, again, sessions on Saturday. We'll have a big Celtic session in there. On, on Sunday we have a big uh, country jamboree. And then in the evening it sort of goes over to dance. And uh, that's our licensed venue as well. So there's... Uh, there's libations available in there. And it's really easy to move between all three stages and to catch all the stuff that you want to catch. It is it really walking distance. You're literally oh, yeah. across the street. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So how do you, uh, you say 2,000 people. How do you get 2,000 people in Stewart Park? Well, I'd say it's not hard, actually. I mean, oh. there's, there's a lot of traffic into Perth in the summer, as you know. Mm -hmm. And people are looking for things to do. So people in the town know about the festival and... And, you know, come as a matter of course. And then we get people who are in town for the day who may not have even heard of the festival and they drop in. Like, wow, what's and, going on? Yeah. yeah. And then some people, you know, have looked at the lineup and see artists that they want to listen to or, or hear. And it's a chance to come and listen to them free because it's a, except for the Crystal Palace uh, in the evening, the entire festival is free. And so people will come from far and wide to see their favorite performers and uh, sit in the park with their families and, and hang out and enjoy the music. It's, it's just, it's a, it's a really community-based, family-friendly festival. And, uh, and yeah, people just uh, sort of wander in from everywhere. And I mean, it's, it was certainly was missed during the pandemic when you couldn't do it. Last year you were able to do it and you just full bang on, everybody was back. Yeah. I'm glad you were there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was the, the Saturday night uh, was probably the fullest that anybody had ever seen the park yeah. before. Wow. It was it was not only completely packed in the field in front of the main stage, people were on the banks of the river on the other side, uh, looking at it, and and over in Code Mill Park, you know, listening to it. So yeah, we and it's a rain or shine event. Well, I mean, it's oh. it's a rain and shine rain or shine event to a certain degree. If we start getting lightning and mm -hmm. thunder in the area, then we're obliged to shut it right. down. Right. But if it's just a light drizzle, the, the, the thing will still go on. I, I, I remember seeing people out there with umbrellas and their, yeah. their, you know, the raincoats and everything. Like oh, yeah, that. people come prepared for everything. Going. Yeah, yeah. Have, and you have to for an outdoor event. Yeah, and, and the, yes. it's true. But I, but I, I think that, the, the, you know, we don't think about rain so much anymore as we really think about sun. Yes. You know, about how to keep people out of the sun. And that's why we've moved some of the stages around so that there's more shade available mm -hmm. for the audience. And we try and keep that Crystal Palace area really cool. We have, you know, misting stations so that people can, can um, you know, sort of get relief from the heat. Yes. I, th I think heat now is more of a concern for people absolutely. than, yeah, than absolutely anything right. else. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I, I, I always say that the Stewart Park Festival, we, we all call it SPF. And I, and I always say that it's actually about our sun protection. Yes, yeah, absolutely <laughs> right, absolutely right. Let's talk about the lineup, though. You've got, I, I don't know how many, you've, I've written them all down here, but you've got a huge lineup. Yeah, well, we, we have about 18 slots to fill on the main stage wow. we, from Friday till, till Saturday. The music starts at 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon, uh, and uh, the main stage ends usually around 9 o'clock each night on the Friday and the, and the Saturday, and then Sunday we just sort of do a half day. It goes from noon until until about uh, four thirty in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, people like Stephen Fearing, uh, Juno nominated, uh, an award-winning uh, singer-songwriter originally from Vancouver, lives in Victoria now, but lived in in Ontario for a while. He's coming uh, coming for us. Uh, Matt Anderson is going to be headlining our our Saturday night. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got um, a band called Cobo Town play uh, Calypso 
music, uh, who are actually coming up from Toronto to play in the dance venue at the Crystal Palace on the Friday night. Right. So you can do your Calypso dancing. They go on to do a festival in Montreal on Saturday, and then on the way back, they play the main stage at 3.30 in the afternoon on Sunday. So we also pick up musicians that are moving through the area. We've got a band called uh, ASE, who are from Denmark, uh, and they're, uh, they're a blend of Danish and Turkish music. So oh, wow. it's, uh, it's got this really, really interesting feel to it. We've got a band uh, coming up from Memphis uh, that are on their way to the Blues Fest called Southern Avenue. We're just incredible Memphis blues, like really, really traditional Memphis blues, right. but a really high energy band uh, that are going to be playing for us. And then we have young up and comers, like a, a, a young woman from the area named Mia Kelly, uh, who, uh, you know, a few years ago was, was sort of like one of the youth performers, but she's now really, she's put out her first CD. She's touring the country. Uh, so she's coming back to us as a fully fledged. Uh, artist now, and it's interesting to watch the, these progressions. So Mia Kelly, who's local, Kate Weeks, uh, yes. who is an incredible traditional uh, traditional musician, also local to our area, mm -hmm. going to be playing with James Stevens on the fiddle and some other band members. And then you know, the Saturday kicks off with the uh, Academy for Musical Theater, one of our local theater, children's theater groups, yeah. and they always do like a 30 to 40 minute presentation of. Uh, of you know whatever musical it is that they they've been working on for the year, so it's it's a great it's just a great thing. Well, in your website too, if you go on your website, you've got all these musicians that are playing, and you can just click on them and just you hear a little bit of uh, what kind of music they're playing and uh, exactly. get an idea. Yeah, you you'll get uh, on the page, you'll get their social medias, you'll get their videos, their all these these sorts of things. So you're you have an idea of what it is that you're going to be seeing. And, and Stewart's Park Festival has been around for such a long time. I'm sure some of these musicians, when they get the phone call from you, can you play? It's like, hey, you guys have been around for a long time. This is quite an honor. Yeah. 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 And 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 there's a lot of musicians that that just really want to want to do the festival, yeah. uh, as as a matter of course, just because it's known to be well run. It's known to be a a really good audience that's really enthusiastic, uh, oftentimes about hearing new music, about hearing music. They're, they're, a lot of people at the festival want to uh, walk away with a new discovery. They mm -hmm. want to hear somebody that they've never heard before. Right. And, uh, and our audience is very open to that. Right. Now, I, I think I read you have a shuttle bus. Yes, a shuttle? Yep. Yes, there's, a, there's a shuttle runs from a couple of different locations uh, from over at uh, where, where people can park uh, over at uh, Last Duel and uh, the other one is up by the highway. And so these shuttles run at regular 20-minute intervals, and you can just park your car without having to deal with the parking downtown. Park your car, take the shuttle in. The shuttles run until uh, after 11 p.m., like I say, every 20 minutes. So very easy to get there and no hassle about parking at all. Excellent, excellent. You've got like vendors and there's food. I mean, you're right downtown Perth. There's so many restaurants down there too, but you've got vendors for food? Yeah, we've got yep. food vendors. We've got food vendors on site, all kinds of different food vendors on site. And we've all got all kinds of artisans, selling their wares, uh, everything from, you know, people who do uh, like batik tablecloths to people who do, uh, you know, pottery, just all kinds of things. So there's a beautiful in that little horseshoe behind town hall. That's all where the food is and, and the, uh, the vendors are in there as well. And then for kids, we've got uh, various activities over the course of the, the, uh, the, um, the festival. But the one that was new to us last year uh, and turned out to be very, very popular are the Capital Mermaids. Oh yes, okay. And they are mermaids. They uh, get all suited up and they got, you can't see their legs, they got uh, wow. a tail and a fin and they're out swimming in the, in the, uh, in the, the pond there behind the, you know, behind the main stage wow. and do an interactive show with, uh, with uh, kids. And it, it, that was really popular last year. Excellent, quite amazing. excellent. So people need to bring their lawn chairs or a blanket, that sort of thing? Yeah, a water bottle, yes. uh, you know, to, to keep hydrated, hat and sunglasses and, uh, and bring an appetite. And uh, maybe bring the, a little bit of money for CDs, and then we also take donations because it is a free festival. Right. Uh, we're funded basically on the uh, by people uh, being generous with us in terms of donations. So as you come into the park, there are you know donation buckets and and whatnot there. And we just encourage people to to give what they can, and uh, and that Absolutely. that helps sustain the festival. Yes, for sure, for sure. And once again, it's July 14th to the 16th. Yep. More information, you've got a Facebook page and you've got a website too. Yep, uh, yep. stewartparkfestival.ca. 
Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So come out and enjoy some great music and uh, a lot of socialization and some mermaids. <laughs> and some mermaids. <laughs> Where else? No fishing, though. No fishing. No. No, no fishing. No fishing. No <laughs> fishing. Oh, this is great. This is great. Thank you very much for coming here My today. My pleasure. James Keelahan, the artistic director for our, our, our Stewart Park Festival in Perth. Once again, July 14th to the 16th. Go out and enjoy. Excellent. Bring your sunscreen. Do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs>